Hello everyone. Um, so a few days ago I got a request asking me if I could do a video of me taking the player piano action out of the piano and putting it back in. Um, and that's what this video will be. I was going to make it yesterday actually, but our power was out, so I couldn't do that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to carefully take the upper player action, or which is known as a stack, out of the piano and then I'll put it back in. Now, two disclaimers here. Uh, the first one is I'm going to be working with my like one hand because I'm holding my phone in the other. So it's not going to be that easy. It's a lot easier to take it out without holding a phone, obviously. Um, taking these player actions out is actually not that hard. It's just pretty heavy. But the other disclaimer that I will give, probably the more important one, is that these are quite delicate and not all player pianos are the same. In fact, none are the same. If, you're play if your piano is from a different company, it will not have this mechanism in it and the disassembly process will be slightly different. So keep that in mind. Um, the process is going to be similar, obviously, because most player pianos look something like this, but it will not be identical. Some pianos will have more tubes, some will have less, some will have more mechanical linkages that you have to remove, some will have less. Um, this is just a general idea of how you would do it with a with a upright, non-reproducing player piano. For this job, you're really only going to need two tools, unless I'm forgetting something, of course. I But um, it would be two flat head screwdrivers, or flat blade screwdrivers. One which is just the bigger one, and then a smaller one. Um, so to start, um, the first thing you want to do is start taking the tubes and the linkages off that need to be removed. Um, now don't go around just unplugging random hoses or tubes because you might not know where they go. You have to actually look very closely at the piano and see which ones actually have to be removed. So in this piano, the obviously the big trunk line, which is down there, the main section which goes to the stack has to be removed. The air motor has to be removed, or not the air motor, the air motor tube has to be removed. This little tube under here, which is the cutout for the main vacuum and the um, tempo governor, has to be removed. And then this tube right here has to be removed, which is the button which controls this pneumatic. The pneumatic tube has to be removed from the stack, and the same thing on this side. Now, this piano, the me the mechanism that switches it from play to rewind is up completely up here on the stack. There's no mechanical linkage to the key slip for that on this piano. However, there is one for the tempo lever, and it's right over here. So that has to be removed as well. And then once all of those things are removed, and put aside, there are a few screws. There are actually only three screws on this that have to be removed. So I'll take the mechanical linkage off first. Again, this is going to be a lot. This would be a lot easier if I had two hands. Just be gentle with them because they are delicate. Move that off to the side. Right now, I'll take this little tube off. Reach back behind. Pull this one out. Like I said, I can't stress this enough. Be gentle with this mechanism. Don't want to cause more damage. Take that one out gently. I should also mention that the piano action itself, which is behind the player action, is also quite delicate, so do not bump it. Okay. Switch hands. Some of the I haven't taken this action out in a long time actually because I haven't got the piano tuned in a long time. So some of these tubes are a little stiff. None of the tubes on this piano are deteriorating because it was restored fairly recently. But it's not that easy to get them off. There we go. And just set those aside. got everything on this side. All right, so I already loosened this one a little bit because I knew it was going to be hard to do. 
Just push this down. This is the main vacuum line for the air motor. Just push that down there. And we, I'm gonna actually be unscrewing this. When I disassemble this, I don't remove the connection from here. I always remove it from here and unscrew it just because if you're pulling on this, it puts the stress on this bracket and not on the actual air motor. And then the last tube we have to remove is the big main vacuum line. And that's actually done from the bottom. And this is where it connects to the pumping lower player action. So what I do with this is I, I should have loosened this earlier. I loosen this from this flange. And then I loosen it like this, and it should eventually come off like that. And I just set it here. So all the tubes are disconnected. All the mechanical linkages are disconnected. Now all we have to do is actually unscrew the action. So the first one I will do is this bracket up here. probably switch hands. My right hand is more dominant. In fact, if I can remember correctly, this one wasn't even threaded properly, so you don't even really have to screw, unscrew it. That's the thing with old pianos like this. A lot of the screws don't even thread. Keep the screws in a good place as well. Um, I'm just gonna put them up on the mantle. So that's removed, and now we have to remove the two big screws. And again, there might be more or less screws depending on your actual player action. These screws on this piano are actually screwed into a metal threaded bracket. So they will hopefully always be able to thread on. It won't be where the wood gets dry and you can't thread the screw on. The only screw that needs to be removed is the middle screw on each side because the two, the one on the top and the one on the bottom, are actually meant for regulating the player action. Essentially tilting it forward or backwards. So that needs to be removed. On this side, I mentioned earlier, we have to remove this as well. And a long, small screwdriver like this really helps because you want to do this without damaging the air motor. side. Again, like I said, always be really careful with these player mechanisms because they are delicate. Alright, that is loose enough to do by hand. And now the last screw. Alright, and again, I'm going to take all these screws that I removed and put them in the location where I'm storing the screws just so I don't lose any. Alright, so the player action is completely separate from the piano now. There's a trick to taking this out because if you take it out wrong, you can damage it. On this particular piano, you want to slide it forward because the push rods actually go under the piano action. So if you just lift it out, it will damage both the player and the piano actions. 
pull it back until it hits that little the stopper there, which is for the cover for the keys. Um, and at this point, you grab both ends and lift it out. I'm going to pause the video here and do that because I for sure need two hands for that. Right, so the player action is successfully out of the piano. And as you can see, with it removed, this is functionally just a normal upright piano at this point with a few tubes just lying around. Um, and the player action, when it works, it pushes up on this section of the action. And the player action, I've placed it over here on the couch. And you can see all the little pneumatic actuators and the push rods and all the tracker bar tubing which goes to the valves, the tracking slash transposing system, and the air motor. You want to place this like this where it won't tip over. And you also want to place it where there's the pre pressure is not being placed on these little pneumatic actuators because they are very delicate. The bellows cloth on those is really thin. Um, so at this point, you would perform any repairs that you'd need on the piano action and the player action. Um, as you can see, this action, the piano action, can be removed as well. If you unscrew these, there's four of them on this piano, and you gently lift it out of the piano. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this video because that is a completely other, a completely different process, and it's. Uh, I'd say it's even more of a precision activity than removing the player action because you have 88 little hammers and all these other little parts that you can wreck and usually there's no reason to take the actual piano action out so um, I'll leave that for another video but I will demonstrate me putting the player action back in the piano uh, but for that I'm gonna pause the video right now just so I can lift it and put it back in so the player action is physically back in the piano, and I just went ahead and did one part of one of the hardest parts of this endeavor, which is fishing the little tubes back into the right spot. It's very easy for those tubes to get lost inside, and you really want to do it while the action's not fully in yet. Um, so yes, it's easy easier to connect the tubes when it's kind of out like this. So I'll reconnect this one. Again, this is for, this is the little pallet valve switch for the soft rail. And I'll do this one on this side because these are the most likely to get lost inside the action. And they go down to the lower part, so it's hard to get them out without removing the action again. That's connected there. And that is actually the reason why the top note and the bottom note on this piano don't play it's because those pneumatics were used for the or those valves were used for the soft rail pneumatic now on this piano the second highest and second lowest note also don't play but i think that was probably when they restored it they just didn't hook them up because no barely any rolls use those all right so this tube is the actual suction tube from the valve to the soft rail pneumatic on the base side. And again, it's proving to be quite challenging to get it where I want it. All right, I'm gonna have to push the action in a little more for that one actually. That one's in. And again, use care when doing this, because again, it's easy to bump into stuff. All right, next is the this pneumatic, and I remember this one being one of the hardest. All right, there we go. Sorry if the camera's not pointing exactly where it should be. I have a hard enough time making these videos while I'm pumping the piano. <laughs> it's a whole other story trying to fish tubes while holding a camera. 
All right, I'm gonna switch hands. Probably do it better with my right hand. Now, the last one we have to be concerned with, of the little tubes at least, is the cutout tube, which shuts off the tempo governor when you're rewinding the roll and shuts off the vacuum to the stack. And there is actually a way with the, um, this is just a little fun fact, there is actually a way if you go to the bottom action of this player piano to make it so that it plays music when you rewind. Um, which I've tried before, and it goes so fast that the piano, it's kind of incoherent, obviously, plus you're playing it backwards, so, so, it'd kind of be incoherent anyway. So then this one goes back on like that. Now, these tubes have a, again, they have a way of getting in the way of the action, so this one I'm actually going to unplug and put in front of the soft rail tube just because it will help pull that tube away from the action otherwise the high the highest note on the piano will not work properly again this just takes time to get right good and on this piano the um, sorry I was having my finger over the camera there this piano the um, tube that goes to the um, cutout in the bottom has lots of extra slack so it's easy to move it around where you need it to go the other ones not so much all right just verifying that that's in and do the other same on the other side and I'll push it closer to where it's supposed to go all right while I'm here I will reconnect the tempo linkage all right that's good now um at this point before hooking up the tubes which go to the um air motor and the um, the air motor and the actual stack it's probably a good idea to um, screw in the stack okay, I'm gonna grab the screws Thread them by hand first. Not that these ones actually catch anything, but uh... One. It just needed to be pushed in. Move that out of the way. That's in. That's in.
nice and tight, but don't over tighten it, obviously. Do the same with this side. All right. Now we'll tighten up this flange as much as it'll go anyway. That one is tight. One thing that I'd like to repair on this piano eventually is the joint between the air motor and this tube. It's a little loose. It's not causing much suction loss, to be honest. This piano actually holds really good vacuum. But uh, I'll get around to it when I have some free time. And I don't know if you also noticed, there's a, some sort of plastic tape, it looks like, wrapped around the brass um, connector that goes in the air motor. Because, like I mentioned in my How a Player Piano Works video, if vinyl tubing which is what's used here comes into contact with the brass it will essentially turn to goo and in order to stop that they put a piece of some sort whoops piece of some sort of tape there so that's nice and solid so i will go ahead and reconnect this tube to the flange All right just verifying that the high c works and now the last tube that we have to connect is the main one and we're going to do that in the exact reverse order that we removed it so we try to fish it oops try to fish it up here until it connects it's kind of tough to do without looking at it and this is one of the advantages of actually taking off the door where the uh, I'll show it up here. The door with the, like the, the cover for the keyboards, I mean, because you can see it a lot easier that way. I think I've got it. So I'll just push it up. All right, now it's in the right spot, so I'll bend this up and push it onto that flange there. And these flanges are made of lead, so there's no concern about the uh, um, vinyl turning to goo. Also, I'd probably like to get a real elbow here one day in the future. But anyways, um, that's basically it. The next step you want to do, obviously, is make sure everything works. Now I'll pause the video and then I'll just push up the piano bench and I'll show you how I do that. I'm here at the piano and uh, I'm going to switch it to re-roll or rewind to verify that the air motor works and that tube that cuts out the main suction works, which it does. If it didn't, you'd see the keys start to move down and the air motor wouldn't move nearly as fast. Um, now. To test the actual playing of the notes, because you never know something could have come unplugged, like a hose or something. So you could just play a roll, but I have a method where you can verify that every note works. And what you do is you set it to play when there's no roll over the tracker bar. And you have to pump pretty fast, and you'll notice that all the keys are starting to go down. And then if you move your finger along the tracker bar, you can see them coming up like that. Which means that all the notes on this piano that are supposed to work, let's just do that again. All the notes that are supposed to work are working. So the next step would be to play a roll, just to test to see how it sounds.
piano is playing nice and loudly and I don't have to pump like crazy. In fact, I only have to pump... I, this piano, it, like I said, it holds a good vacuum. I have to pump pretty slowly, actually. And it plays really loud, which is a good sign. It means there's no leaks, or no significant leaks at least. We didn't forget to plug in a hose. Um, we've hooked everything up properly, and it means that this was a successful removal and replacement of the player action. As always, I know I've said this like a hundred times in this video. Be careful. Don't rush. That's a big one. Um, make sure you get to know your piano. Find out where all the, the hoses go. Find out what everything does to the best of your ability before you go taking it apart. Because if you know how the piano works, you have an understanding of how player pianos themselves work, because they're all pretty much the same, it will be much easier to work with when you take it out and put it back in. And if you're willing to um, repair it yourself, that too. Uh, I don't recommend repairing it yourself if you don't fully understand what's going on. I'm even nervous. Not that it doesn't really need anything, but uh, I personally, even though I'm quite a technical person, I'd be hiring a professional to fix my player action. Um, anyways, um, thanks for watching. I hope this helped anyone who needed to um, remove their player action for tuning or service or whatever the reason may be. Uh, thanks for watching.